share with me uh, some of the structures that you have to you've had to deliberately put in your business to to ensure that there is growth structuring your business would actually determine how far your business can go you know i used to run my business like a sole proprietorship i just hold my phone i take my calls i market my business i brand my business i take the pictures i edit the pictures i design the album i do everything possible on my own before you know and it really affected me you know you know a lot of us used to think that until you are big before you can put certain structure in place in your business that is very wrong there are little structures you need to start cultivating even when your business is growing like like the place of you not talking to your customer that is my opinion. Everybody has their own opinion. But it's not good for business. You, you business. mean a third person should be negotiating. Yeah. So what if you're, you're not yet on that level? Because again, I, I truly understand what you're saying. Mm. But there is also that balance of not being superficial. Yes, yes. You're not there yet. It's very important that even when you feel that your business has not arrived yet, you create a perception to your customers to make believe that your business has actually taken that automatically gives you a stronger hand in getting this so-called business you are looking for you know i may, i didn't do that i didn't apply these principles but guys that i mentor now people that learn from me that are on their own now yeah i'm teaching them i'm showing them my mistakes and they are applying it in the best way possible and it's working for them you do this and when i say talking to customers for example i'm not saying you should just be the kasuke and thinking or just hire one random secretary to just be negotiating your business. So, you know, when I started doing this, I used like my most personal person. Someone that is, is like my brother. He knows me. He knows my life. He knows where I'm coming from. He understands my expectations. He's not just somebody I just interviewed. I just brought him. Of course, I have staff now that I that came in through regular. But I have people that, you know, were my day one. They, have even, they even knew me before I actually became a photographer. That was the person I started with. They have to take my phone. Help me talk to customers. Now, most of the times, I'm the one behind the phone. In fact, there are times where I talk to my customers, but I act like I'm not the one. I will tell the customer, okay, yes, we, um, we would like to do it for you for this price, but this is the best we can offer. Okay, you know what, Ian? Let me talk to um, Magic. Can I get back to you? And I'm the Magic. I hope a non photographer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope a non photographer is not watching. <laughs> It's just brand. It's just yeah, business. Yeah. I'm, 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 just, I, 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 I'm just being honest here. I feel you. you know, yeah. This is not just for photography. It's just as in, you have to make create a vibe where your customers will see that this is an established brand. It gives them natural trust in your brand. But when the customer a customer knows they are talking to the alpha omega beginning and the end of the day, yeah. you are not. It's not good for your business. You know they know they can even use a different kind of psychology to vibe with you. Beg you. Some will even call you in the middle of the night. Because they know it's you. It's you, Gogo. So they can call you around 12 and say, I found my pictures. And sometimes I wonder, why would you call me around 12 in the middle of the day? Because they know the, that phone number is Sheyi's phone number. But now, when, when we tell our customers, <laughs> ah, we're sorry we couldn't pick your call last night. We were, we had were closed in the office. They yeah. understand. They don't even, they know. But before, ah, I was calling you now. Why didn't you pick my call? And it was 11 p.m. So that is how. So the moment they know they are dealing personally with an individual. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Yeah. Trust me. It so does. that's one. Give me mm. a few more. Mm. Business mistakes. Uh, the, the place of uh, uh, pricing. It's, it's, it's very important that you, what's the word? You you are aware. You know? Because it's for of a long time. Of where the market is. Yes. For a long time, I was not aware. Because I didn't really have so many friends before. Or not until now. That I've, uh, you know, I didn't have maybe. In fact, most of the people that were my friends are the people that were, let me use the word that I was teaching and mentoring. I was like the, you yeah, know, Oga. I didn't have any Oga. Like the best in your That was the best yeah. in my group, thank you. So I, I was not aware. All I knew is, okay, three, six, three months ago, I was charging 200,000. Let me move it to 250,000. That awareness will go a long way. So you know what the market is saying? Because you, there's a level you get to as a photographer where you don't have to be aware of the market. You're already big. So you know what you deserve as a, as a creative. If they can't pay you this amount. It should leave you be. But there's a particular level you'll be before that, that average market where that market is for the mass. Yes. And so, you need business. So what you take home is relative to other people. Thank you. You can't come and be forming, this is my own price. No, you are not there yet. You need to understand what people around your level is yeah. charging. So you don't overshoot and undershoot. Because if you undershoot, yeah. you'll be like, this guy is too cheap. So there's always that point where we need a photographer. Mm. And there's that point where 
is rare magic or nobody. Thank you. That's it. That's the word. When you, they say it's rare magic or nobody, they don't, those kind of clients don't think about your price. All they know is they want to make sure you should their wedding. But at the average level, they are looking for someone that will fit into their budget. Yeah. I heard the point. You have plenty. So if you don't work around that budget range, and okay, 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 you still you can still pick this amount. They will now start deliberating. Should we pick this one? Should we? You'll be doing mini, mini, mini more. That is what happens in that average market. So yeah, that's why many times you negotiate with the client, you will discover that you've given them the best discount possible, and they still didn't book you. Why? Because they have options in that range. That is why there's nothing sweeter than finding every possible way to step up to the next level. So how does the photographer do that? To stepping up to the left. Yes, when you know how <laughs> we are too many in this tank. So that's that's the toughest part of any industry. How did you make it? Mm. I was yeah. For me, uh, if you if you are not uh, radical enough, uh, you can't get to the top. This one is a general principle. It's not about just photography. If you are not intentionally radical and crazy, trust me, you can't get to the top. I won't say I'm at the top. Let me not come and form me. No, no, I understand. Do you understand? Yeah. But you have to understand what makes a big photographer big. This is it. What are the things that make you see a photographer and say, ah, this photographer is big? Naturally, sometimes you will just take your, maybe you're on Instagram, and you just see a photographer you've not heard of before. And you see the photographer's pictures. And you already know the photographer is big. How do you know? You know, you don't be like, ah, really, my big photographer. It has to be a big photographer. Because of what you see. The kind of content you see, just naturally in your subconscious, you just know that ah, this, this guy, person is big. This guy is large. Because because of the kind of maybe the kind of locations he's shooting. Just for example, you don't know Stanlow before. I'm sure you should know Stanlow photography. You've not heard of him. And all of a sudden you come across Stanlow's page. Ah, uh -huh. you know that this one cannot be a chief photographer. You know, or probably these notable names that we have in our industry in Nigeria. You just know why? Because of the kind of content on their page, like the dress of the bride. The, the kind of makeup on the bride's location, face, the air, the location, the decor, yeah. you know, and many other elements that make an image beautiful. That is what makes it be. So when you see the picture, you'll be like, ah, no, this photographer is naturally. And when you see some, you know, yeah, you doubt if this person is at that level. Why? Because of the kind of thing they put out. That is what helped my brand. You know, I realized that, okay, I keep working on myself as a photographer, I keep improving, but the kind of content I was putting out was not as, it, it didn't match up with my skill. I keep learning. Ah, I'm very, I, just, I was still on YouTube last night. Let's talk about that learning part. Mm, mm. Because, I mean, that's what gets you into yes. the bigger time. Yes. My, my, my natural process is this. On my desk, I have a huge screen, TV, by the side, and my laptop where I work. Every time, most of the time, not every time, most of the time when I'm working, I'm on the laptop editing, and my YouTube is on the screen. I'm watching something. I'm always watching something. Just last night, I was learning Lightroom. I'm actually, to an extent, I'm a guru when it comes to Lightroom. But I was watching Lightroom, a Lightroom course, all over again, where they were talking about camera calibration and euro saturation. I know how to use these things. I use it already. But I was watching it over again. They're ingraining it in Thank you. I was digesting it. And I learned one or two things. They are very minimal, but it's, it's like you are in school. It's the build up. Over time, over time. Before you know it, you start applying certain things you watched six months ago. And if, ah, okay, I want to correct you. Oh, I learned how to change colors in this area. You do it. It's a continuous process. That is what helped me. What, what I realized in my business was I, I learned past my level. I got to a certain level in my life that I was so good at, but my, my, my work was not showing. It was not, that is when I now intentional. That's where I was able to, you know, let me say, go to the next level in my business. I realized that I can't keep shooting regular images. And, but those were the kind of weddings that were coming my way, regular jobs. And no matter how good as a, as a photographer that you are, if you are not shooting the kind of stuff that will bring out your work, you remain average. A lot of photograph, a lot of jobs we see that we are mind blown online now. It's not the photographer that did the magic. It's the, it's the content that is the magic. I just feel like what is the, what kind of drama can I bring to my images? I started writing things down. Okay, I'm going to do a shoot. I'll put a bride, I'll put a groom, I'll style them, I'll do the decor, every costume required. And you need to the amount of money I've invested in a shoot is millions, not even thousands. Because I spent over time. I just keep, I don't care. I don't care if I empty my account. All I know is I want the shoot to be fantastic. So whatever sacrifice I have to make, whatever amount I have to pay the designer or the model, as long as I want you to model for me, I will find the money or one way to just pay you. Because you are the one I can, my vision just aligns with you for that particular project. I will pay. Or Jacob. Or, just because I wanted to start putting out content that match with my skill. And the moment I started putting out that content, 
that match with my skill. That was it. Awesome. Yeah. Now, <laughs> what's the most ridiculous negotiation experience that you've had? <laughs> I mean, people promise all sorts of things. So many. I had this job in Abuja, I think 2017 or so. You know, and uh, they told me to come for the introduction. This was uh, January that year, and the wedding was for April. You know, let me not tell you the amount I charged. It's not. You just, you just Don't say that. I can't remember, but it was ridiculous. Maybe 150 or so. It was terrible. How did you but, get to Abuja? Did you trek or have it train? Was, but no, road. And just road. And that was where the issue was. You know, when you don't have a proper structure in place. And you know, they they, they told me uh, BM Pro is doing me. I remember. Ah, uh, what? They told me BM Pro is doing me makeup. Then I was already interested. Ah, if I can be a wedding with uh, BM Pro as a makeup artist, that is good for my name. Or you know, that would automatically interested me. Then the dad of the groom happens to be an army general, and the dignitaries will be coming. For the wedding that Obesiri and the Kenyan got together are performing. So I was hearing those things. But is it a good or bad thing, really? As a then? No, no, as in to even if they're not paying you mm. what you feel you de deserve, deserve. Yeah. Is it is, is it a good consideration? Say, ah, well, I will, even if they're not paying me, being in that atmosphere might help me. Yes, it is. Is it a good thing? Yes, for a, your level, for a certain level, it's actually good. Jobs that will help you develop better code. Just like my former boss used to say that I should you should tell me then that I should if the bride comes, I should ask for a picture. If I see that she's actually very pretty, I should just take the job. Because it will help me. If I have a pretty bride and I can create beautiful images of a pretty bride, you know? And I put out that is that is an advantage. That's even a though, nugget there. You know, even though that was when I started. You know, even though I don't have they don't pay me well as long as I could, that's that's like automatic free model for me. And I have good stuff, you know. So at a, at a certain level, you can tend to take job for the sake of your content. Mm. You know, like for example, you are shooting weddings where they are dignitaries. For the sake of your content, that is a level. But there will be a time where it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. All you have to know is you get paid for what you deserve. I went to Abuja and uh, in fact, it was quite an experience. I was there for three days. First night, they took us to one house. Their father's friends, uncle's brother's house. We slept in one bus cutter that didn't have window. The second night, they said someone wants to use the room. They took us to another place. <laughs> but, oh, no, I, well, the next day after the wedding, when we were coming back to Lagos, where it's this Siena, we were like five in the back seat. Imagine all the way from Abuja to Lagos. They said we should manage in, in the cold you know. We should get to Lagos. Oh, God. What a, what a, that was the day I vowed that in my life, I'll never travel by road. So do not. You know? Imagine five people in Siena in the back seat, all of us like this, you know. Good because I went to shoot the wedding where they didn't even pay. In fact, the things I even I was hoping for, you know, that I would experience, I didn't even experience because it was it was just stressful. And there's nothing as bad as stress when it comes to creating. Imagine you going to shoot the wedding, you've traveled in the bus the day before, you are, you are exhausted, you are not even thinking straight. He told you to sleep in a place where there's no window and mosquito has messed you up all night. And five o'clock you have to wake up and shoot a bed. How would you you can't even function? Papa, if we make it worse, the bride dressed up in her family house, and you know how this wedding was bride dressing in her family, bride's mother, bride's father, all the friends. So I could not even create. The reason I was even passionate about going to was just a waste, you know. And I, I was like, this. The, what motivated me to take the job was because of the kind of people I wanted to go and shoot. What is this? Oh, it's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> my brother. <laughs> so many stories. <laughs> so many challenges, crazy moments. But, so how um, do you... How do you negotiate effectively? The effective negotiation is short negotiation. Mm. The moment your negotiation is getting I like short, that. It's getting <laughs> short. It's short. If you want to be effective, that's the moment it's getting too long. It's no more. That's no more negotiation. That's begging. <laughs> you understand? The so is that, that you are begging the client? Exactly, the client begging. is begging you. The moment the you are calling them, ah, for how much last now? Yeah, my, my husband said, can you, oh, yeah, do it for us now. Okay, I'll go, let me talk to my husband. I'll call you back. The moment is getting to two weeks. Yes. You should, I don't believe you guys should talk for too much. It's okay if she says she'll get back to you. It's normal. She wants to consult her partner or uh, stuff like that. She gets back. Yeah, of course, there should be some kind of negotiation gap to your pricing, in my opinion. Some photographers yeah. will say there's no need. Plus they, or minus. Yes, yeah. you'll be like, okay, let me give them some a ring. discount. Because everybody loves discounts. And I believe it's only fair to offer clients discounts. So photographers will say no. If they really want to make them pay the money, it's fine. Everybody has their policy. But for me, I believe uh -uh, to an extent, at least, even if it's 10% or 5%, there should be some discounts. So what I've learned is if the clients want you, they want you. Because you'll be, I mean, that's why you, see, when I was still at that average level, you know, you, you, you book jobs and uh, 
Maybe, for example, they pay you one amount that you, in your mind you know that ah, this money is not what I deserve. Or you say, let me just do it. You now get to the wedding, you see Kwan Mwan. Or you see Sonia D. Or they use Monarch in Vesta. You now be like, oh God, why did I do this? It happens to every, almost literally every creative. <laughs> that is what happens. If they want you, they will choose you. If you like under price, it's up to you. What is just important is you have to make sure the price is what you deserve. And you're not shortchanging yourself. Yes, it's very important. It's very, very, very important. Even when you are average, know that at least I'm going to have decent profit on this job. Not that I'd be like, it's because she begged me. That's why I did it for her. Uh, that is very, I used to do it. I won't lie. And it, it didn't work. Yeah, because mm. it appears that people who beg you might eventually insult you. They will, not that might. They always insult you. The ones that beg you are the ones that will trouble you. The ones that just go straight to the point with you are the ones that will take care of you. Clients that be like, please come to the bad dog for my wedding. I'll come to a kitty. I will do our best. Because when you get there, they just abandon you one day to hotel that does not have water. <laughs> Trust me. You will think the way you guys negotiated, you guys have a t vibe. You guys, so they, you, you already see them as a friend. That's why you even help them. You give them discounts. You enter the road. When you get it, just treat it as trash. Or maybe when it comes to delivery stage, they won't be. They will just like, ah, hey, my pictures. Can you come on? Say, it's 30 days. I'm not going to my pictures. Oh, no, hold on. We are working in your pictures. We want you to have the best quality possible. No pressure. No, what do you mean? I paid you in full. I paid you in full. That's what they do. But the ones that come and they understand your policy, you understand your structure, you give them a considerable discount, they book you. Oh, that, that's... I mean, this is so, so awesome. And I mean, so many things to learn from, from what you're saying. And I hope that um, creatives are learning in this fine art. Mm. That's what I'll call it, the fine art of negotiation. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we want to find out what is in Shay's bag. Stay with us. Yes, it's still Camera Lounge coming to you, courtesy of Camera Joints, Nigeria's number one camera store. And I've been speaking with Shei Adige, the creative director at Rare Magic. Yes, so we have quite a number of pictures here on the screen, and I would like you to talk us through them. This is like my best work last year. Skyline. This work actually shook. Architecture. <laughs> it shook. I used uh, to pass this all in Ibado. Anytime I go to Ibado for okay, work. Okay, yes, this is my Mapo Yeah, Mapo Hall, hall yes. Yeah. I used to Did like, you grow up in Ibado? No, I've not even lived there before. I just used to go there once in a while for work. Oh, wow. So I used to pass. I used to see that I want to do something here. It looks like all these ancient, vintage yes. palace. Lovely. You know? And I just went there 24 to 70. Um, this is I worked on the cloud. I changed the sky. Gave it some, you know. Special touch. Yes, and I love the balance. Yes. The, the balance in the picture is more like um, from 30% up there, yeah. you cut it there. Yeah. And then you, I mean, it's just awesome. Yeah, it's just yeah. awesome. Ah, this one has, <laughs> this is your, man. this day, it was, where do you know? It was after the church. I was, I was, I, want, I wanted to get a good shot of the couple because we were able to take good shots in the, in the morning. So during this message, when Pastor Peter, I stepped out of the church. I was walking around the street. Looking for looking for what I can And I saw this bush. There's one huge abandoned trailer behind them actually. But I had to, you know, remove it. I saw this bush. I was like, okay, I can use this bush as an element and add some clouds to it. So after the service, the bride was tired. She wanted to just go to the church. I had to beg her. Like, see, I think I made a video then. I posted it. I had to beg, please, do this for me. She was like, my hair's rough. My face, I said, don't worry, just trust me. I had to take them to this. Well, like, ah, when she got there, she was like, ah, this bush now, why would you come and take me in this kind of bush? I said, don't worry, just trust me. If not for the groom, like, let's just do what he says. And he took the shots, you know. And when she saw it now, it's like a big friend in her living room now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You've, you've said to me twice now that you've had to beg someone who paid you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the place of that? It's about you having an understanding that you have to get the result, despite the challenge. Your result or their result? I think I would say my result because it's it's very important to me that my clients get what they pay for. Very, very key. And trust me, when it comes to shooting weddings, it's very challenging. You know, on this one, you should put it, you have all the time in the world. Wedding, that's not the case. The best mother can say, don't take my daughter here. The bride might say she's tired, she's hungry. And at the end of the day, after the event, you get blamed for it. So it's your fault if something goes wrong with your pictures. You know, and everything that goes wrong in the wedding day, the photographer must find a way to correct it. Be it the dress, be it the makeup, be it the air, be it the, it's all on the photographer. So, if you have to beg to get the result, beg, you understand. So, it's important that you are confident. And when the challenges come, you don't let it sway you. 
what you are paid for is should be your focus. So if you have to beg, beg. If you have to shout, not disrespecting anybody, shout. If you have to stand your ground in certain, I'm taking this picture. There are times where planners or make up that we have to go now. And I'm taking this picture now, and I'm taking it here. I will say it out loud. You know, there are times where I will even literally threaten. Maybe they're like, they have to go to reception now. I'll say if anybody shouts reception here, now I'm going to drop my camera. I've done that before. You know, I'll drop my camera and I won't shoot again. Everybody just just silence. You know, and I started shooting. So there are times where you have to go hard to make people understand. Let me do my work because at the end of the day, and you know, you'll be the one to come. Like, oh, why did they capture? And if I say, you had one that said you were going to do this one, they say, ah, why well, did you, you told us to stop told us what, you, what would it Thank take you. us now? Thank you. So I'd rather do what I have to do as long as I get my results. All right, so I guess it's now time to see what's in your camera bag. Okay. Yes, pull it out. My guns. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. This is massive. Yes, sir. This is our, what we use for the magic. So when you're, when you're, when you're going for any wedding event yeah you go this full yes like most of the time uh, i go with nothing less than two to three camera bodies yes, with all my does stuff. does the amount they pay you determine no. this, this guy's uh, yeah. no, okay no, as yeah. long as i'm shooting i take everything everything you need everything available all right so yeah. are you a canon guy or nikon I'm guy, a nikon guy, or guy. Uh, but i'm not criticizing any brand though yeah. canon is fantastic Sony is for right now i'm a nikon fan so I use the Nikon Z6 too. I have a Z6 also. I don't think it's here. I use the Nikon Z6 and I have the Nikon D750. Yeah. Oh. Yes. So I have the D750. You know, these are the cameras that I. This is the camera I've been using it for like three years. This is like my baby. This yellow camera. Everybody. Some clients will say, "Where is that your yellow camera?" Because <laughs> still... Okay. So it's always had this um, uh, cover. Yes. Since I got it. Wow. Uh, yeah. So it's become like a, a brand. Yeah, brand. some uh, you didn't bring that yellow camera because you've seen it a lot on social media. Uh, okay. you know? but this see. is my new baby. Wow. Z629. So this is the newest and sort of best of them all. Yes, this is the best of them all. Z62. And I have uh, some lenses. I didn't come with everything, but I have a, uh, let me see what, I think this should be my 85 mm. This is my, my portrait lens. Wow. This is a Sigma this at 1.4. 1.4. Yeah, 85. Well, what's the 85? Yes, 85, 85 mm, yeah. 1.4, yes. Oh, great. Yeah, this, this is like my portrait lens. This is what this I is use for all my portraits. Yeah. They already get, you know, people should give me money. You know. ah. <laughs> You're money. making your money. Quite a while. Like <laughs> you know, then I have a 50. This is 50 mm. I got this recently, just like a month ago. Yeah, yeah. what's the f-stop? 1.4 also. 1.4. 1.4. Okay. Sigma Arts also. I decided to invest more on Sigma Art lenses because of image quality, you know. But my best lens is still 24 to 70. I didn't come with it, but that's my favorite wow. lens mm, because it's just it makes the whole thing sweeter. Because shooting weddings can be you know, a lot of running around, a lot of pressure. So when you have a lens that just covers a major range, that is necessary. You are good to go. And that's why I always recommend as a wedding photographer, you should have a 24 to 70 in your bag. This is my 70 to 200. You know, I have a certain 200, I have uh, 35, I have another 35. Wow. Uh, yeah, you know, we have second shooters. Has a, a camera equipment or accessory filled you, like, in real time? Mm, not really, but um, I've had an issue with my memory card failing me. Wow. At an so, event. So, in, so what did you do? How did you cover? I had to cover? buy during the event, you know. I had to buy it. In fact, it happened recently. It was camera agents that even saved me. Yes, just um, this, um, November. Yes. I was at the church and the card was just showing damage. damage. So you went to camera joint? I called him. I didn't go. I just called him to order a good card and send it to me. Immediately. So camera joint is a lifesaver? Yes, it's a lifesaver. This is real good. Thank you. So that's it. That is what Sheyi Adige carries in his bag. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Shay, for coming so through for us on this program. Thank it's been so such much. an engaging conversation. Thank you so much for having me. It was an amazing time. And that's it on this episode of Camera Lounge, brought to you by Camera Joints, Nigeria's number one camera store. I'm Kaida Lainde. Peace out. Lights, camera, action.